Hi, in this video we're going to talk about proteins. These are the functional units of biology, the guys who get everything done for your cells. And we'll see many different types of proteins throughout this course. We'll see some that function as catalytic enzymes. These are going to be specialized proteins that help carry out specific chemical reactions. We'll also see transporter proteins. Transporter proteins help carry molecules and ions across membranes. We'll take a brief look at motor proteins. These are going to be proteins that help carry out motor functions at the molecular level. And we'll also take a look at proteins as signaling molecules. Proteins are polymers of amino acids. Amino acids are organic molecules that have an amine group, seen here, and a carboxylic acid group, seen here. Now, you might notice that these two groups are charged. The amine group has a positive charge and the carboxylic acid group has a negative charge. In normal biological systems where water predominates, amino acids tend to take this charged form. Now bear in mind that the molecule as a whole is neutral because the positive charge and the negative charge cancel each other out. We call special molecules like this zwitter ions. Now this is not really an important term for you to know, but you might see it come up from time to time. Now amino acids also have attached to their central carbon here a hydrogen and what's called an R group. The R group is what makes each amino acid unique. The rest of the molecule is a shared structure between all amino acids. Now amino acids are linked together via peptide bonds. Oops. Peptide bonds form via a dehydration reaction. See there is water between the carboxylic acid group over here and the amine group here. We can remove this water and form this peptide bond right there. Now there are 20 unique amino acids used in biological systems. And knowing all of them is probably a good idea for the long run, but definitely more than you're going to have to do for this course. However, it's good to know the general trends in amino acids. You see, some amino acids are hydrophobic. Some are hydrophilic. The importance of this will become clear later. Now it's also worth noting that amongst the hydrophilic amino acids, which include all of these, that some are basic and some are acidic. These over here are considered the aromatic amino acids because of their aromatic rings. Now, you don't really need to worry about those. We're not going to talk about them too much. All right, let's turn the page.